Hey guys, Craig Beggins here. I'm the broker for Century 21 Beggins Enterprises. Um, I started a new series called Home Buyer Questions, and I've asked my agents to give me questions that home buyers are asking a lot, and I thought I'd record a video so they could use my words or they could take my words and say it to you. So today's question is, um, what benefits can home buyers apply for, and what are ranges of pay that qualify for FHA? Okay, so let's talk about this just for a brief second. So FHA, the Federal Housing Administration, is a, is a charter from the government to make home ownership available to Americans, right? Because home ownership is a benefit to the economy, right? We stimulate so many businesses every time a sale is made. Home Depot benefits, painters benefit, framers benefit, woodworkers benefit, flooring people benefit, surveyors benefit, title companies benefit. I mean, we're a catalyst for economic growth when a home sells. So they want home ownership in. And then there's pride of home ownership. And there's all kinds of studies about, you know, families with children and homes that are owned are more stable and school than families in rentals. Because generally speaking, at least in Florida, as a real estate, a lease is valid for a year. So you get a place to live for a year, and at the end of the year, the person with the owner of the house can either raise your rent, kick you out, not renew, be unstable for. So that's one benefit of home ownership. But uh, anyway, I deviate. The question is, what benefits can home apply for, and what ranges of pay that qualify for FHA? FHA. First of all, there's no ranges for FHA. If you make a lot of money, you can still get an FHA loan. If you don't make a lot of money, you can still get an FHA loan, but the loan limits are going to be less, right? So if you only make $30,000 a year, you could get an FHA loan, but there's no houses that you can buy based on that limit. So you're kind of in a bad situation in that case. But the most important thing with FHA is debt to income ratio, right? So how much is your monthly household income? And then how much of that can be applied toward home? And how much can that be applied toward other debt? So that's your debt to income ratio. So let's say, round numbers, I make $4,000, let's say, to be a little happier, I make $10,000 a month household income. The max FHA limit is 57% of your debt can be applied to your home. Now that's a huge amount of debt for a home. It's not a recommended, actually, but FHA to Americans or to US citizens. So 57% is the max they can do but each lender sets their own limits. Now, traditional conventional limits are like 38, 42. 38% of all your debt could be your mortgage and then the rest can be cars and boats or whatever stuff you have. So it's a really fine ratio between your income and what your obligations are. So people that are saddled with student debt, this is part of the student debt loan crisis, right? If you've got these student debts, that goes against your income and reduces your buying power. Right? So all these, every action has a reaction in this world. Right? So debt to income is huge. So a lot of times when we start the home search process, we'll get you qualified with a mortgage broker who's going to identify, oh, sugar, um, you're, you've got too much debt based on your income. Before you can really buy a home, we need to get your debt reduced. That means pay off your car, work to pay off your car, get your student loans down, do whatever you can, because all those things are going to bring your ratio down that you can't qualify. And it's heartbreaking. Right? Everybody comes to us, they want to buy a house, and we pull the ratios, and they go, oh, sure, you're not ready yet. So we're going to put you into an incubation plan. And then sometimes we'll get credit counselors in to help you work on all this stuff. Sometimes we consolidate debts. Let's say some high interest rate credit cards and some lower interest rate. You switch those balances around to get your minimum payments down, because even your minimum payment on your credit card is going to apply to your debt. right? So if we can get those things taken down, then we can get your ratios back up, and you can qualify for a house or even more of a house because you did that. So once again, it's a strategy where the agent and the loan officer and you are working together to help, right? And then there's other things we can do too, but. Um, so ranges of pay really just depends on your debt to income ratio. You know, if you've got four cars with loans on them, you're probably gonna put yourself out from being qualified to buy a home because you've got too many car loans, right? If you've got a car and a motorcycle and a boat, and they're all financed, leveraged hard, you're probably not, you're not gonna make the ratios. So it's not so much how much income you make, it's how much debt you have to your income that's gonna matter. And the loan officers will help you figure that part out. The part two of the question was, what benefits can a homeowner apply for? And this is huge. Well, number one, um, and people don't think about this, right? If I'm paying rent, and rent in, we're in Tampa Bay. Rent in Tampa Bay now, I mean, a three, two basic house is $2,600 a month now. It's amazing what's happened here, right? Now, 
I'm talking about the benefits of home ownership, I'm talking about the detriments of renting. Number one, you're going to pay $2,600 a month, right? And, and people don't get this. When interest rates go up, the investor who buys the house is paying more for the house. So what's he going to do? He's going to charge more for the rent. So write this one down. These are like words to live by. Um, if you're not paying your own mortgage, you're paying somebody else's when you're renting. That's just what it is. So one of the benefits of owning is you get depreciation, you get interest deductions, and you get property tax deductions. So let's say my property taxes are $5,000 a year and my taxes are $5,000 a year. That's $10,000 a year. I get to take off my income as a deduction from my standard income. So let's say I'm a 30% tax bracket. I take $10,000. That's $3,000 a year. Well, that's, almost, that's $250 a month. So if I'm renting, I'm paying $2,600. If my mortgage is $2,600, I'm getting $250 a month back from the government from a tax incentive. So it's really only $2,450, $2,350. And it's better than 2600 right? And then I get the benefit of appreciation, because theoretically, historically, houses go up about 5% a year. Now, we've had a couple years where they went up 20-30% a year, which was super exciting and fun if you own houses. But if you don't, you missed out on a huge opportunity. And you're, you're paying the penalty, because now you're paying higher rents, because the investor that bought your house has to charge more rent because he paid more for the house. right? The other huge benefit, and this I've talked about in separate videos. You can find the archives on YouTube. but. Um, when you own a home, you can file for homestead exemption if it's your primary residence, so the house you live in more than six months of the year. And homestead exemption does something really, does three really cool things. Number one, it caps your appreciation. Your assessed value goes up every year, right? Or it could go up, could go down. But let's say in the last recent year, my house went up 30%. So theoretically, my assessed value would go up 30%. But because I have homestead exemption, it's capped at a 3% annual growth. So let's say it's a $100,000 house. It can't be worth more than 103 dollars next year, even though it's worth 130. dollars So that's a huge benefit for locking in your taxes. Number two, um, there's a $50,000 exemption. So let's say it's a $130,000 house. Um, it's the assessed value. I get $50,000 knocked off the top. So I'm only going to pay taxes on $80,000 because I get that exemption, the $50,000 exemption. And then the third thing, which people don't understand yet, but is really important, over time, when you live in your house for a long time, that cap saves up a huge amount of money. So let's say John and Mary bought their house in their 40s and they've lived here for 30 years. Now they're in their 70s. The house they bought for 130 is now worth 700, right? They want to sell the house now because it's too big. The kids have gone, et cetera, et cetera. And they go buy another house. But the new house to be comparable, it's going to be 700. Well, they're, you're paying taxes on a basis house of 130. So the taxes are super low, two or $3,000 a year. But now they go buy a 700. They've got the money because they made $700,000 on their house. So you buy a $700,000 house, but the $700,000 house comes with a $14,000 tax bill. Man, that just sets you back in retirement, right? You weren't planning on that. But the third benefit of homestead exemption in Florida is you can port your savings. This, it's called our Save Our Homes benefit, tax benefit. You can port that savings from 700 to 130. You can take that number to your $700,000 house, subtract that from your assessed value of the new house, and it'll bring you back to where it was. So it's designed to help retirees still afford to live in the quality of house they want to live in, even though they sold it for a lot more money. So there's three reasons right there <laughs> to uh, want to be a part of home ownership rather than renters is a long term. They did a study, I just read this the other day, I won't get this exactly right. But basically, um, upon death, people who die that owned homes have a net worth of substantially more than people who've rented for their entire lives. All right. So this is a time for right now, if you're, I love saying it, my kids are about 29 and 30. And Homeownership is, is one of his homeowner ones wants to be homeowner. And um, what a great opportunity to start that young and lock these things in. So, um, so FHA is a real option. It's designed to promote homeownership. You've got leverage on your debt. So you can get more, more house with an FHA loan than you can with a conventional loan, plus there's a lower down payment. The government wants you to do this. It's good for the economy. It's good for schools. It's good for everything. So I hope that answered our question for today. And tune in and we'll show you more in a little bit.